This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino. Welcome back. It is time for Silver and Black today in Odyssey Sports original podcast covering the Las Vegas Raiders, also heard on the radio in Las Vegas. So hello and good morning to our folks out in Las Vegas listening to us on 101.5 FM KDWN, also on the Bet Las Vegas. So we're on two stations there. We appreciate you all being with us. Uh, and I say us because, yes, we're here to talk about Las Vegas Raiders football. I am Scott Branson, your host, along with my co-host, that is Mr. Mo Moten. Mo is the senior NFL writer at Bleacher Report. He's also the Raiders columnist at sportsnot.com. You can follow him on x.com at Mo Moten, M-O-E-M-O-T-O-N. I am at LV Gully. You can catch my work up on sportsnot.com as well as here. And uh, we're going to jump in. Training camp. Hey, they got pads on, Mo. It's, it's, it's not just shorts and shirts anymore. They're actually hitting people now. It feels good, doesn't it? It probably doesn't feel good for the offensive line who have to go against Max Crosby, but for us, for us, uh, just you know, itching for football, it feels good for us uh, just to see the guys hitting pads and, as Antonio Pierce said, a lot of clanking and banging on the field. I'm paraphrasing a bit, but yeah, getting some physical in there for, for the football season. Yeah, I love uh, the, the the interviews because, you know, there's a lot of the networks, a lot of the national folks are out at the camps. And because the Raiders are in Los Angeles and Costa Mesa, they are getting a lot of visits. So you're seeing a lot of interviews. Man, and I said it a couple of shows ago, Antonio Pierce has just gotten so comfortable with being the coach and and doing the interviews. It's, it's really nice to see that confidence. And we're going to play part of an interview uh, in the next segment. So this segment, we're going to talk about the quarterback thing you talked about everybody kind of itching and wanting football to start and these guys to get out there and actually play real football. And uh, I want to talk about some of the dangers of that in a second, but we're also going to, in this first segment, talk about Mo did a great piece and Mo's got five predictions, five early roster predictions, right? And this is based on not so much what's happened in camp so far, although it is a little bit based on what you wrote, but he's going to get into that. We'll go through that in segment number one, segment number two, we're going to talk a little bit about a Mr. Brock Bowers. We're going to see an interview that Antonio Pierce did about Brock Bowers and talk a little bit about what he could mean to this team. And as long as Luke Getze, as we've been saying over and over again, can use him properly, uh, we'll see that. And then in the third segment, we're going to get to our mailbag. Of course, got a couple calls and texts today that we will get to. That's where you get to call us, 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Text or call and leave your message, and we will get it on the air. Okay, Mo. Listen, a lot of conversation about the Raiders quarterbacks, not only from the beat writers, which is their job. They're there to observe and tell us what they see, right? That's 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 what they do. Uh, nothing wrong with that. But I do see a lot of people getting really nervous or defensive, either way, depending on what side of the fence they're on, <laughs> about the quarterback situation because the quarterbacks have struggled. We saw them struggle during mini camp and OTAs, they're learning a new offense. You have one new quarterback completely new to the team in Gardner Minshew. You have Aiden O'Connell returning from last year into a new system. And uh, the defense, we know, the defense is, is just way ahead of the offense. You expected that. That's not a problem. That's a good thing, per se. But you look at uh, the situation with the quarterbacks because we've heard about, well, they just didn't look good today. There's a... I'm not. I'm still not that worried about it, right? And I, th I think a lot of fans aren't worried about it. A lot of folks that cover the team are just sharing observations. They're not saying it's time to press the panic button. We've talked about this on almost every show, but it goes to show you everybody's so pumped up and excited for this Raiders team this season with Antonio Pierce and everybody else that I think people are already looking for answers. And I think we said it last show, my friend, that uh, we're really, I don't think we're going to get answers until we get through one or two of the preseason games. That's correct. And I, look, I get the worry or concern about the quarterback position. I went into, I didn't go to training camp, but I went into the off season uh, just thinking, okay, the Raiders quarterback situation, Aiden O'Connell has a lot to prove as a second year player. Well, he finished the year, you know, with a solid stretch. Gardner Minshew has bounced around. The Raiders quarterback position isn't very appealing. Mm -hmm. So the NFL told you, Basically, they're not really interested in the Raiders right now because their quarterback position gave them, I believe, two primetime games, standalone games, compared to what they had last year. Let's be honest. Outside of Raider Nation and its fans, who's interested in watching Aiden O'Connell and Gardner Minshew? Someone <laughs> yesterday, I was Tuesday night, posted, is Gardner Minshew versus Aiden O'Connell 
the least cared about quarterback battle in NFL history. Of course, he was being hyperbolic, but he was just underlining the point that, you know, there's no star power here. Uh, you got a journey, basically a, a journeyman cornerback in, in Garner Minshew. So nobody's going to care. So that's where the concern comes in. We don't have a star quarterback. We don't have a, a first round pick in there to compete for the job and be our long term star. So I, I get that. But as you said, the preseason will determine who's going to be the starter and how well this offense, probably how well this offense will start off the year against the, against the Los Angeles Chargers. So while I'm not panicking yet, I understand the pessimism because who's competing for the position and the concern because for the most part, now there are conflicting reports out there depending on who you lean on for your training camp notes. But for the most part, beat reporters have said that, you know, these quarterbacks haven't looked that great. And they've struggled in some parts, sometimes turning the ball over. Now I will also say it's not always, it's not all in the quarterback, Scott. There have also been some drops at training yeah, camp as well. Drops, but not only that, Mo, remember that whole offensive line on the left side is in mm -hmm. flux. And right. so remember who's rushing over there. Max Crosby moves around. Terry Wilson, we're hearing great things about Terry Wilson, of course. Um, Christian Wilkins is there. I mean, this defensive line is tough, man. And so when you're there as a quarterback, you're learning the offense, and you don't even have your starting offensive line in there yet, that that you're under pressure, right? So you have a lot. You have to get rid of the ball fast, makes a lot of mistakes, ball sale. That's what happens, especially when you don't have – a quarterback who can move out of the pocket really quickly and create more with his legs. And so, so I'm not surprised by it all. And again, I'm not worried about it. I think the situation you're right. I think, I think a lot of people, and I've, I've been watching all the training camp coverage on NFL network and other places. And I think I've seen a lot of people and it's kind of a mixed bag. If you're a Raider fan who I know a lot of Raider fans get upset when the national media poo poos them. We've talked about that at nauseum on the show, but mm -hmm. I understand it because they look at the Raiders defense and they go, wow, wow. This defense could be really, really good. And on offense, wow, Brock Bowers, Devontae Adams, pretty good offensive line if they're healthy. You got Jacoby Myers, who the media seems to like I, for some reason, which is great. He's a fine receiver. But you look <laughs> at all that, and then you got Michael Mayer. So I think the national media looks at it and said, this team is really good. But, ooh, the quarterback, like, we don't know. So I think that has, has spurred on some of this, too, which is like, hey, things seem to be gelling pretty well for the Raiders in camp and otherwise uh, it's just the quarterback position because everybody knows how important it is. Right. So we, we always say it's a quarterback driven league. So of course yep. all the attention is going to go to that position. Antonio Pierce also made a comment that he's waiting for the quarterback to jump out and say, I'm the guy AP I'm here to take the job. And he hasn't seen that yet. Right. And, and you know, we'll talk about my piece on sports, not in a minute momentarily, but it, it's, it's, he's not going to, I don't think he's going to see that until the games start being played in the preseason. And then you're going to start to see the separation that you may want to see. And if, it, if it's, you know, if it's uninspiring, then we're going to go into week then one and thinking, you know, okay, that offensive line is going to have to play its best games this year. Samir mm -hmm. White in the run game is going to have to play a big part because if they don't, then this team is going to struggle. And a lot of people think the team is going to struggle. Anyway, as we talked about last week, the six and 11 predictions that Jack Jones, Roberts Blaine talked about. Correct. And I would offer this as well. Gardner Minshew is a veteran. He's been around. He's been through different teams and he is what he is. We, we keep saying that Aiden O'Connell, of course, had great spots last year. And, and, and I think he still wins the job. I just have that feeling. But remember, Aiden O'Connell last year didn't compete for the job per se. He was there. Everything went haywire and they handed him the job. I'm not saying he didn't earn his opportunity, but he wasn't competing in training camp for a starting role. It's a different thing. So the, the the pressure, all of that associated with that. Now, hopefully the young man can handle that. But I'm saying it's a different feel. It's a whole different ball game for him this year. So you have to understand that. And, and he might take him a little bit of time to get adjusted to that. So we'll see how it goes. Go. Really quick, Scott. Yeah. Ted Wynn of the Athletic made a good point Yeah. on Tuesday night. He said, a lot of Raider fans expect this defense to be – you know, one of one of the best defenses in the league. Wouldn't you be more concerned that a defense that's mostly been <laughs> together for three years under the same defensive coordinator was getting the ball moved on them by an offense with a new offensive coordinator, you know, a second year quarterback and a journeyman quarterback? Wouldn't you be more concerned if it was the other way around? The offense was just going through that defense, the defense that you all expect to be great. If defense is going to be great, 
has to start a training camp in practice, right? So you can look at it glass half full, half empty, depending on how you're viewing this. You you can be concerned about the offense because, you know, several consecutive days not playing well, practicing well. Or you can look at the other side of it and say, wow, we may have a top five, top three defense that can help us win some football games, even if the offense struggles. Yeah, absolutely. No, good call. And, and I, I did see Ted's uh, post, and it's true. Imagine if they were lighting up the defense, you'd be like, holy crap, This what's wrong with this defense? So <laughs> you can't have it both ways. What you'd like to see is the defense do really well, and then the offense in spurts pull right. some nice plays against the defense. And I think they'll get there. So we'll wait it out. We'll see how the rest of this week and then going into next week goes as they prepare for the first preseason game which will be interesting for everybody. All right, Mo, let's get into this now. I want to talk about, you wrote a piece up on Sports Not, which I'm going to put up. For those of you watching us uh, on, on YouTube or wherever you're watching us, uh, I'm going to put up this story uh, that Mo did up there. And Mo made some predictions. Mo Thomas came out of his <laughs> out of his hole. And um, he has, oops, there we go. And he's giving us, this 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 prediction of early roster predictions, which you can you can go up and read on uh, on on um, Sports Not. And so, Mo, I want to. Oops, I'm trying to get the screen right, but it's not working for me. But there we go. Okay, so so we 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 look at this. There we go. I'll get it right. There we go. No, now you're see. I'm oh boy. Everybody's listening to me, going, "What the hell's going on with this guy?" All right, there we are. So, Mo, <laughs> I want to go through this. Sorry for that, by the way. Uh, for our video audience, too, by the way, a uh, shout out to our new partners, Bet US. Yes. And uh, by the way, there's some links there in the description. Make sure you take advantage of that. And uh, we got a bonus there and lots to come from us with Bet US. So get ready for that. All right, Mo, let's get into this, though, with, uh, with, with your, your piece on the Raiders roster predictions. Um, first of all, tell everybody a little bit real quickly about what went into this? What is your thinking as you went through these positions and these players and predicted that they'll make the roster? So everyone's doing training camp notes. You know, we, mm -hmm. you know, we have a bunch of esteemed beat writers there giving you their firsthand notes, some of them giving you footage. So I wanted to just turn it, spin it forward and just give you some roster predictions because before you know it, final roster cuts will be here August 27th. Right. So it's all we're already in the month of August. We're going to spin it forward to some predictions. And basically, I just look through some of the now the Reds have two major position battles, but I also look through some of the I don't want to say back end position spots, but some of the rotational roles that could be up for grabs. And then and, and that's what filled out this article started with, obviously, the quarterback and the cornerback positions, which are the two biggest battles. And then I went into some of the training camp standouts, sort of. Some You're hearing some buzz about some of the guys that could come up and carve out a role for themselves. So I wanted to make sure I highlighted those guys in this piece. It's got you there. Scott. Can't hear you, Scott. All right, Mo. So you, uh, we know we've been talking about for weeks, Aiden O'Connell and why you thought that he would win the starting job. And I agree with you. Listen, you know, I, 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 I do. Uh, but tell everybody again, real quickly, why you think Aiden O'Connell wins that starting role at the end of camp? All right. So right now. Aiden O'Connell, if the week if week one was tomorrow, let's say the Rays are kicking off this Sunday against the Chargers, I think Aiden O'Connell will have the job right now by default, simply because <laughs> as I've mentioned, the quarterback battle has been lackluster for lack of better terms. So I think because of Aiden O'Connell being there last year, I'll be under a different play caller. He knows uh, his teammates. He's been on the field with Devontae Adams. Jacoby Myers, Michael Mayer, Trey Tucker, they're more comfortable with Aiden O'Connell because they've got a year of experience with him. So by default, today he, he wins the job. But as I pointed out in my piece, if you remember last year, and I know last year was last year, but remember the preseason, Aiden O'Connell was pretty good yes, in the preseason. <laughs> Two, three touchdown passes, completed nearly 70% of his passes, I believe 69.4% if you want to be exact. But he lit it up in the preseason. So, And he did that under Josh McDaniels in a more complex offense. So if he could do that in a more complex offense in the preseason against vanilla defenses, why wouldn't he play well in a less complex offense under Luke Getzey against vanilla defenses? So I think 
Aiden O'Connell, as long as he doesn't look terrible. Even if Gardner Minshew does play well in the preseason, you kind of expect Gardner Minshew to play well in the preseason. He's a veteran. He's been around the block, been in the league for about six years. Right. So you expect him to be able to read defenses in the preseason. Well, Aiden O'Connell, if he performs similar to what he did last year, I think he holds on to the job and starts week one. There you go. And I, I will not anything that you have Jacorian Bennett winning the starting cornerback job. We talked a little bit about this last show, but um, what gives you confidence there that he's going to win? Is it because we've hearing that he's playing well? Is it a combination of that and the fact that there really isn't anybody else over there that I think is exciting? I think it's a combination of both. There, there are reports out of training camp that he is looking pretty good mm -hmm. in practices. I believe Brendan faced a miss of practice. I believe it was Monday, it was said. And Tashawn Reed's piece over at The Athletic. Brendan Face on misses a day. Ja'Cory Bennett steps up, took all the first team reps, and, and played performed very well. So I think that bodes well for him going into the preseason. Now, of course, he has to continue to do this and has to translate to the regular season. But the Raiders not adding a veteran cornerback, and we talked about this a lot, that do they add a veteran quarterback after they checked in with Steven Nelson, according to Aaron Wilson, KPRC2 in Houston? They didn't do that yet. So the fact that they didn't bring in a veteran quarterback, you got two rookies into Cameron Richardson and MJ Devonshire behind him on the depth chart. And Brendan Faison, let's be honest, is a career backup, right? <laughs> he's about 30. He's going to be 30 years old yeah. when the Raiders kick off on September 8th against the Chargers. So yep. with your Corey and Bennett, you're looking at can he be that long-term answer opposite Jack Jones? I think he gets another shot, but I think he actually earns it and plays well in the preseason to win that job. All right, we got just a couple minutes, uh, Mo, before we have to take the break. So we're going to get to one more player that I picked out of your list that I want to ask you about. Uh, and 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 then if you want to find out the other two, go read Sports Night. You got to go read Mo's piece. It'll be linked in the description on the video and on the podcast. So if you missed it, don't worry. It's there in the description. You can go click on it. Uh, Dylan Lobby. So you're buying into the hype, the, the AP hype, the reporters hype. You're buying in. You're, you say he will eclipse Amir Abdul as the number three on the depth chart. Yes, and I get it. The training camp hype videos and talk <laughs> happens every year. We always get a cap standout. Doesn't do anything in a regular season, right? Right. But I think Dylan Lowby, if you look at his play at New Hampshire, he is tailor-made. And I think I said this on Tuesday show. He is tailor-made. His skill set is for the third down running back position where he can catch out of the backfield. And I think that's exactly what his role is going to be. They're not going to ask him to carry 10 times a game. They're going to say, hey, look. You know, if we had, we're going to pass the ball on third down, I, of course, he has to pick up his pass protection uh, assignments if he's going to be on the field on third down. But I think he'll be able to do that fairly well, being that he, you know, did that in New Hampshire. So I, I think with his skill set, his pass catching skill set, he's a natural uh, receiver, in my opinion, out of the backfield. I think being the younger guy with those hands, he could usurp Amir Abdullah, who is 31 years old, and Amir yep. Abdullah probably moves specifically to special teams. I know people are excited about him, and uh, I hope it fits out. I hope that that does happen. I think it would be huge for the Raiders to to hit on a player like that in the draft and have him contribute right away. All right, we are going to step aside to take our first break. When we come back, we're going to talk about Brock Bowers. A lot of bounce coming out of camp there, too, about Brock Bowers. Surprise, surprise. Not as surprised as we were on draft night, but we'll talk about that when we come back. You're listening to Silver and Black today, an Odyssey Sports original podcast, also heard on KDWN in Las Vegas, as well as the bet. Don't go anywhere. Michael Vick at BetUS.com. Catch an incredible 125% sign-up bonus on your first three deposits, plus 10% gambler's insurance. BetUS, my online sports book and casino. All right, here we are back at Silver and Black today. We appreciate you guys being with us. Do us a favor, if you don't already subscribe to the show, do so wherever you get your audio. And if you're watching us on YouTube or wherever you're watching us, make sure you subscribe, hit that notifications bell, and give us a like, a thumbs up, wherever you're at. We would appreciate that as well. And we are back and uh, just want to say hello to our Las Vegas audience, too, listening on the radio. Thanks for being with us. It's great to be back. Mo Moat and Scott Branson back with you. We are talking Raiders training camp and the buzz coming out of it. We talked about Dylan Lobby in the last segment uh, as Mo picked him as one of his roster early roster predictions. Again, his story linked in the description below, so you can go read the rest of that list. A couple names on there that might surprise you or might not surprise you. So check that out. But Mo, I, I want to talk about this interview that I saw because we have talked about, when we were doing our live draft show, we were both shocked when they took Brock Bowers. 
but then we, within a few days, understood why. He is a multifaceted offensive weapon. He's not just a tight end. We have uh, had interviews on this show with people who covered him in college. We've had everything. So we kind of, I know I'm very excited to see him, but we also know that we saw it with Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer was the best tight end, in my view, not just because I'm a Notre Dame guy, but he was the best <laughs> tight end coming out last year's draft. And we saw him struggle, right? Tight ends often struggle when they come into the league. But Brock Bowers, mm, you know, is that going to happen with him? Well, uh, Antonio Pierce talked with Jonathan Jones of CBS. I want to play that for everybody right now. Uh, and we'll talk about Brock Bowers and what he means to this team, because I think uh, it's going to be a big deal. So here is Antonio Pierce. It's hard for a rookie tight end to transition to the NFL, right? What does Brock Bowers need to do to get ahead of the curve? I think he already is. Really? Honest, man, this, this guy's special. He gets it. He's played the game at a high level in, in the college. He's come here. He's taking his playbook seriously. He's taking uh, his routines, his work, things from the meeting room to the practice field. He is not a repeat offender. Um, ball, ball means a lot to this gentleman, and, and that's all he cares about. And he doesn't want to sing. He doesn't want to talk to the media. He just want, like Even like he said today, I just want to put the pads on AP. I want to show everybody, and I'm excited to watch him. Well, there you go, uh, Antonio Pierce on Brock Bowers. And you know what? Uh, listen, and the one thing you can say about Antonio Pierce, and every coach has got to be political and they got to play the game and they got to do that. But you know, when he's speaking with conviction, and what he said there about Brock Bowers, Mo, is exciting because you love that a rookie is not phased by being in the NFL and he doesn't want to do any of the other crap. He just wants to go out and play football. You're not going to catch Brock Bowers putting a Kermit the Frog Muppet on his hand and, and mocking anyone. I tell you that much. He's 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 all business. Brock Bowers. I yeah, mean, all when they asked him about how does it feel about putting the pads on, he was like, "Football's supposed basically football's supposed to be with pads on. You know, it's going to be fun." He he said like six words. Yeah, and, and he's the type of guy that you're not going to get a resounding interesting intriguing interview so i don't expect brock bowers to make his rounds on pot raider podcast anytime soon but a lot of people are going to have a lot of positive things to say about him once he gets on the field as more than just a tight end so when you talk about brock bowers don't say tight end brock bowers say football player brock, brock bowers all business brock bowers or offensive weapon brock bowers. Offensive that's how you address it yes that's how you address it yes he will be a tight end he will be a slot receiver he will be an h back and who knows what else he might even be a fullback, carry the ball. You, you just don't know, and that's what he did in college. But but really interesting there because, man, you know, for, for a, a head coach to say that, man, you know, there's a – because Jonathan Jones, as I said earlier, there's, there's a learning curve for tight ends in the NFL because you got to block, you got to pass. But with Brock Bowers, he's like, man, he's already done. He's, he's there. He's like – so this is a guy – and, again, we talk about the pressure on Luke Getze – but he's going to have players like this. And, and yeah, will Brock Bowers have his share of mistakes? Of course he will. Everybody does. But very exciting to hear this coming out of camp because if Brock Bowers gets off to a fast start, Michael Mayer in his second uh, year gets off to a fast start. If the quarterback plays good enough, this offense, I think, can produce, if it's all healthy, can produce quickly. And I think they're going to scheme a lot around Brock Bowers, and also use him as a decoy, uh, especially if he starts off hot, which I think is going to benefit this offense and benefit Luke Getze's opportunity to to have some some multifaceted looks to throw off uh, defenders. He'll take some pressure and uh, command coverage away from Devontae Adams, and also, mm -hmm. you know, for any quarterback, rookie or veteran, some of the quarterbacks, one of the quarterback's best friends in the passing game is a tight end who can catch, and the Raiders have two of them. <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, you talk about Brock Bowers and Michael Mayer together where on the field, that could be very dynamic. And we talked about some of the duos with from our uh, friend over there from Fresno in, in our last show. But <laughs> the Brock Bowers-Michael Mayer duo could be something to behold right away this upcoming season. I talked about Luke Getzey's history with tight ends, going back to his time as a pass game coordinator with the Green Bay Packers. Robert Tanyan had had career numbers with the Green Bay Packers when mm -hmm. Luke Getzey was the pass game coordinator. Cole Komet, as I said, as soon as, he, as soon as Luke Getzey got to Chicago, Cole Komet saw a jump in his uh, pass catching numbers. I know Justin Fields, people want to criticize his play. Oh, he had a lot of dump offs. But again, the track record on Luke Getzey says the tight end is going to get involved. And he's going to be heavily involved. And he's going to use multiple tight end sets, 12 personnel, possibly 13 personnel with Harrison Bryant involved too.
And and I know the quarterback situation, as we talked about in the first segment, is still unknown. We're just not going to know for a while. So mm -hmm. I'm not I'm not getting worried about it. I'm not going to overly analyze it. But I do believe that this offense really, because the defense is going to do its job, I really believe that. This offense, I believe, has to get off to a fast start this season. I don't think you can go through two or three weeks and really struggle as an offense because you could easily find yourself losing games that you should probably win, including the Charger game. So so do you agree with that? You think this offense really – I'm not saying they got to be a top 10 offense right out of the gate, but I do mm -hmm. think – they're going to have to show teams that they're going to pay, have to pay attention to not only the rookie Brock Bowers, but they're going to have to now worry about Devontae Adams being one-on-one. -on -one. They're going to have to worry about Mayer and Jacoby Myers and DJ Turner. They're going to have to worry about these guys and and where last year they might not have had to do that. Well, you don't want to here we go again moment where last year you struggled to score 21 points and you come out of the gate and you score maybe 10, 14, and then you know 16 points. Then you're like, okay. This is a continuation from last year. You know, what are we going to do to get this offense going? What are we going to do to spark it? And you don't want to, you don't, you don't want a quarterback controversy so early in the season, mm -hmm. especially with a young quarterback, maybe having to look over his shoulder with a veteran behind him was making, you know, 25 million on two years with 15 million guaranteed. You don't want that. You want that quarterback to pre play freely and be able to just let it all hang out in the field and not have to worry about, you know, the competition behind him, even though it'll be in the back of his head, whoever it is. Uh, but I think it has to start off fast, and if it doesn't, the defense has to be elite. If the passing yeah, game, elite. then absolutely, then Amir White has to come out of the gate as he finished the last <laughs> season and kind of continue where he left off at. So there are some other ways the Rays can win games if the offense doesn't start off fast. But you still have that worry. Okay, when is going to pick up? When is going to pick up? Well, here here's my prediction. You ready? I'm not most Radamus, but I'm going to make a prediction. The great love affair between Raider Nation and Brock Bowers is going to begin now. And I think Brock Bowers is going to be just like Max Crosby, but on the offensive side of the ball. I know he's not a defensive mm -hmm. end but in and, and, and that position, but he's going to do – I think this is the perfect guy. And, and you look at his personality, what Pierce just said about him. This is guy is exactly – what you want with the Raiders. It's like that attitude is what you want. Um, and I think that, that that is so important to this team. And I know a lot of people and, and rate and Raider the Raider way, Antonio Pierce talks about the Raider way. And I think that most people misconstrue that a little bit because the Raider way, yes, it's the tough, it's the personality, it's the punch them in the mouth, but the Raider way, if you go back to really what the core of what it was, was building that offensive and defensive lines, right. And playing that kind of physical football. And, and I think, he wants to get to that. Antonio Pierce wants to get to that. And I think you got to have guys not only up in the trenches, which is vital to win in the NFL, but you got to have guys like Brock Bowers who are serious, right? I'm not saying the guy doesn't have a personality or he doesn't like to have fun occasionally, but all business, I think that's the right way to put it is that's the kind of guy that's, that's how you get that Raider way back. What Al Davis did. It wasn't just personality and, and punching people in the mouth. It was playing football. Like it's your profession. And, like it's a business. It's hey, I got a business appointment on Sunday. The goal is to win, and so I'm going to do everything I can to win. So I love that about Brock Bowers. So Scott, I took a look since you asked the question about does the Raiders' offense have to start a quick? I took a peek mm -hmm. at their schedule. Right, Chargers, mm -hmm. new coaching staff. A lot of people think their offense is going to take a step back, even with Justin Herbert, because they're let's be honest, their wide receiver core is bottom of the league. They're going to run the football. They're going to be a physical football team. Right. Then you got the Ravens. Let me tell you, I know Lamar Jackson is awesome. Two time league MVP. But the Ravens lost three offensive linemen this offseason. So yes. they have some movement. They have some changes up front that the Raiders can take advantage of with their defensive line. Then you got the Panthers rebuilding team. Then you got the Browns. Deshaun Watson hasn't been impressive since he got to Cleveland. Then you got the Broncos. Their quarterback situation just is just as uncertain as the Raiders right now. And then you got the Steelers with the new quarterback. And oh, by the way, they're going to have two new offensive linemen. So I think the Raiders can get away with scoring 21 to 24 points and winning yeah. those football games if they're going to win them. Now, of course, you want to score more. But what I'm saying is that they're not going to face a high powered offense unless Lamar Jackson breaks loose in Baltimore on the run. They're not going to face a high powered offense for the first six weeks of the season. Yeah, absolutely. No, I agree with you on that. It's uh. It's a good place, and that's why I think it's so important for them to get off to a quick start. And if things gel and they come together, I think they will. So all good. All right.
We are going to take our final break here on the uh, Thursday and Sunday edition of Silver and Black today. And uh, when we come back, we're going to get to your calls and a text message here on the Raider Nation mailbag, the voice of the fan, because we always want to hear from you. Again, you can call in 702-900-7869 to be on the next show, but don't go anywhere. We're coming right back here on Silver and Black today. Enough of hearing us talk about the Raiders. It's time to hear from, from you. Any Oakland Raider fan, Las Vegas Raider fan, stand up. On this edition of the Raider Nation Mailbag. Got that black hole rocking and rolling. Don't be a wallflower. Be a part of the show. Leave your question or message by calling 702-900-7869. That's 702-900-7869. Or drop us an email at mail at silverandblacktoday.com. All right, there we go. All the new music. I love the new music. Right, Mo? It's always good to fresh things up. All right. New season, new music, new offense. That's <laughs> new offense. Hopefully new record. <laughs> new results, right? I mean, that's what you want. So, yes. uh, but we always go out to folks. And again, 702-900-7869 is the number to call in and leave your message or leave a text. So we're going to go. Our first caller is a first-time caller. And it is Stabler's Ghost. This is a guy who lives up in New England. He's he's interacted with us before, but this is the first time he's called in. Here's Stabler's Ghost. Gully, Mo, first time, long time. This is Stabler's Ghost from the heart of Patriots country Woo. in the Berkshires, Massachusetts. I just want to say that I think Aiden O'Connell is going to be our guy. But we do need to address the offensive line. And my question is, is DJ Glaze or Dalton Wagner, are those two young bucks doing enough to step up? Because we've had one on the practice squad and just drafted one. And they both can play the interior, even though Dalton Wagner is a monster. Are those two guys going to factor into what we do on the O-line? But also, I have to say, I think our O-line is going to be fine. I think our run game is going to be sick. And I think everyone in the NFL is going to underestimate the Raiders, which is good for us. <laughs> so, anyway, it's a pleasure to be able to talk to you guys. You do an amazing job. Midtown Mo, you are the man. <laughs> and let's go Raiders! All right. Stabler's ghost up in Patriot Stabler's Country, ghost. poor guy. Poor guy. That was the best uh, Mo, Raider I, call we've had. That, that been Raiders at the end, that, that, that rivals end. Antonio Pierce's. Yeah. It was like solid. That. It was solid. Much props. Um, we Another Dalton Reisner mention. Remember, we Dalton, talked about it last Dalton, show. Dalton, Dalton Wagner. <laughs> Reisner. Wrong guy. Wagner. Thank you. Uh, but another Dalton Wagner guy. And and then I think the, the issue, that, and DJ Glaze, like I my hope would be for the Raiders. And tell me if I'm wrong with this. My hope would be you're not talking about those guys because the other guys are healthy and doing fine, right? Now, you have rotational and guys are going to get banged up and they're going to go in. So, yeah, you need the depth. We talk about depth all the time here. But my hope would be that you're not using them unless they win the job, which can happen. But um, what's your what's your view on that? The Dalton Wagner questions keep rolling. I said this they last do. show. And I, I look. They a month for got banged up at a padded practice. I think it was the first padded practice, had to leave, came back. Mm -hmm. And they said DJ Glaze stepped in for Thea Mumford and performed pretty well, held his own when he was asked to come in in the bench for Thea Mumford. So that's a good sign. But I will say that the concern with the offensive line is starting to creep up. And Tashawn Reed, the athletic, said that the interior specifically has struggled, struggled. Yeah. so far in the training camp. And that's, that's Andre James. That's Cody Whitehair at left guard. Now, Cody Whitehair is a fill-in for Jackson Powers Johnson, who's still out. And that's Dylan Parham, who moved from left guard to right guard. So I would be more concerned about Dylan Parham. Is that shift to from left guard to right guard the right fit for him? Now, I felt like he'd be fine at right guard. But we'll see. Mm -hmm. I also have my questions about Dan Mumford having the full-time position at right tackle. We'll see. He has to prove it. But if DJ Glaze has to play, that either means... Colton Miller's banged up, and Thea Mumford had to move to the left side, or Thea Mumford wasn't the guy at right tackle, yeah. and you're plugging in DJ Glaze. Now, DJ Glaze is a third-round pick, so you're expecting that player, a third-rounder, to be able to step in when needed, so you would hope so. 
Mm-hmm. But there are some questions. Is he a right tackle? Is he a right guard? So the Raiders are going to have to figure that out before the season comes in. I will say that very rarely do you see a team start the season with the same five guys to end the season with. So I expect DJ Glaze to get some snaps either from injury or whatever the case. But he has to be ready, and he'll probably have to be ready at right tackle or right guard. All right. Again, thank you, uh, Stabler's Ghost out in New England. All right. We got a text now. This is from JB. JB didn't tell me where he's from, so I, d- I don't know. But JB, I'm going to read your text. It says, our AOC and G-Dog, I've never heard Gardner Minshew called G-Dog, but hey, that's okay, reminiscent of the snake and Plunkett. How would it shake up the NFL and the QB money sit- situation if the QBs played by committee? So two things there. I look at that. First of all, uh, I don't think that while it can work in spots where you need to, having quarterbacks by committee is never a good thing, especially in today's NFL. Secondly, the snake and Plunkett theme. Look, look, Stabler was a second round pick. Plunkett was a, a first round pick, Heisman Trophy winner. I don't think you can compare either one of those guys to those guys. Uh, you have Gardner Minshew and you have Aiden O'Connell, a fourth round pick. Now, if he means can one of those guys suddenly become a great quarterback, you never know. I'm open-minded to it. I don't think it will happen, but it could. Uh, but, Mo, what's your thoughts on that, on uh, JB's text? Yeah, let's remember Plunkett was the number one overall pick. In his yes. <laughs> let's just put that. I know he, yeah. it didn't work out well with the Patriots, I believe, and he goes to o- o- Oakland and re- reinvents himself. But let's remember where those guys were drafted. <laughs> exactly. Minshew was a sixth-round pick coming out of his class. Ain't no kind of fourth round pick. Now that doesn't tell you everything in draft stats about a player's ability, but mm-hmm. and as Scott said in today's NFL, you don't want to have a committee at mm-hmm. quarterback. You just don't see that, and there's a reason you don't see that. What's the old saying, Scott? If you have two quarterbacks, you have none, <laughs> and that that holds true in t- in today's NFL. You, you just want you want to establish a rhythm. You can't do that if you're constantly switching quarterbacks back and forth. And that's why I said with, with a young quarterback, you don't want to pull him too early and then put him back in the game because you don't want to wreck his confidence. Gardner Minshew a little more experienced, whatever you want to call him, guard dog, G-dog, whatever his nickname is you want to use. <laughs> but he's you can pull him in and out of the lineup because he's he's been through that already. Like right. He's been a starter, been pulled mm-hmm. out, been a fill-in starter, even with Indianapolis last year, came in for Anthony Richardson. So he's used to the in and out. But even then, you do, you want your offense to establish a rhythm. It is not a good idea to have two guys switching back and forth every three to four weeks. Stick with a guy for about five to six weeks, see what it looks like, and if he's not performing well, then you pull him and you move on. There you go. 100% agree. And JB, thank you for the text. Next time, let us know where you're texting us from. We appreciate it. All right, now we're going to get to our last call. It is Pastor Mike from Behind Bars. Scott, Mo, <laughs> Pastor Mike from Behind Bars side. here in Oregon. Side. Hey, it's, I know it's been a couple of weeks, probably. Um, I've just been kind of chilling, waiting for the pads to come on. And um, so I'm excited. Pads went on yesterday. I, and I just want to kind of talk about, okay, quarterback play. It's the first day in pads, right? And um, here they're going up against a defense. they got about eight months in Getsy system. And they're going against a defense that's been three years plus in you know in Patrick Graham's system and probably one of the best defenses in the league and people are tripping about <laughs> about the offensive play you know day 1 i mean i don't get it you know i try to stay away from social media between politics <laughs> and, and the Raider fans that are winging out because, you know, we, our offense didn't light it up against our defense when the pads went on. It's just crazy to me. I would be more worried, and I'd be really tripping, if AOC and Minshew were lighting up our defense right yes. now. That would be a major concern. Ding, ding, ding. So it, am I concerned it. about it? Yeah, I would say maybe a little bit, but – hey, let's get a preseason game under our belt, at least. <laughs> you know, AP says, hey, starters are going to probably play the first half in every preseason game. And so we're going to get a good look at what these guys are going to be able to do. I'm excited because, you know, finally the pads are on. Pretty soon we'll have a preseason game. And pretty soon the, the season will start. And I'm ready for it, man. I'll be at the home opener. Nice. I'll be at the open practice. I'm excited to see what happens. But I just kind of want to get your take on it, too concerned about the offense or is it just too soon mm-hmm. i think it's too soon have a good day Raiders. there you go pastor mike read our minds from the first set. i mean he obviously yeah. we, we got the call and he hasn't heard the show mm-hmm. yet but 
same thing. And he's he's dead on. I think absolutely right. Looking at it from the right direction. Mo, if we get three weeks from now and the offense is really struggling through two preseason games, then I would be concerned. Right. And it was the point I made in, in the previous segment is that you're expecting the defense with the continuity under Patrick Graham to be ahead of the offense. Now, I will say you want to see your offense perform a little better and be a little more in sync and have some some better days. Because, like I said, outside of the quarterback play, there also been some drops. Trey Tucker specifically was named a, a couple of times, a few times. Yeah. But you want to see the Raiders clean up those drops at least. And I think there, there are certain things they got to, you know, tighten up before they get to the preseason. But, I, you know, I, I – I'm not panicking yet about the offense. I had my concerns going in, but I'm not panicking yet about the offense. Let's see them play in the preseason game. Absolutely. Mo, we got about a minute left. Let everybody know what you got coming up the rest of this week and what they can look forward to out of the Midtown Mo brand. So I'm going to going to go back into my cave for a bit, come back out and emerge uh, and prepare for the Raiders' first preseason game next week. So I'll have a Bleach Report live probably on Wednesday, and I'll have a sports not piece coming up just highlighting players that i'm most anticipated of seeing on the field in the preseason i'll pick three to five guys that i'm looking i'll have my close eye on in that preseason game against the minnesota vikings absolutely good stuff man and we'll make sure that on tuesday's show when we're back with you we will make sure we give you all the details on mo's live it'll be good and we will get right back at it i can't wait to see them out there so we have Something to react to, uh, to Pastor Mike's point of view about the offense and whether or not to worry about it. I don't think you need to yet, but at least we'll have something to go on. So that's good. Do us a favor. Make sure you subscribe to the podcast wherever you get your audio. We would appreciate it. It helps us out a lot. And uh, that is always something that we appreciate from you. Even if you just watch us on video, still go, go, go subscribe to it on the audio. If you're watching us on YouTube, thank you for all the great chat. Thank you also for the subscription and hitting that notifications bell. Mo, my friend, I will see you again on Tuesday and we'll get caught up on what else is coming out of camp. See you on Tuesday. All right. For our producer, Mike Robbie, for our executive producer in Las Vegas, Mark Bonilla, and for Mo Moten, I am Scott Colbrans, and this has been Silver and Black Today. Raider Nation, we will talk to you on Tuesday. This video is brought to you by BetUS Sportsbook and Casino.